Hey everyone, welcome back. Quick uh, recap for some of the newest uh, items coming across my desk. A um, couple of raw to start off with. I've been uh, collecting this E Exceptional series and uh, just a couple of stunners. I did not have any of the Mike Piazza. I now have uh, one of all players from the. Uh, it's a 15 card set, right? And it goes for parallels. So reds are numbered to 1099. Greens are numbered to 99, and then there's a blue parallel numbered to 250. I've got a couple blues, mostly reds, a couple greens. Um, piecing it all together, I could uh, I could put together the set of reds uh, plus two greens to make the 15 team member set. So uh, I'm excited about that, but I still need to get the McGuire and the Sammy Sosa and a red, and then that whole red set will be complete, and maybe I'll start working on the green a little bit harder. But uh, always fun to collect something that interests you, that draws your eye. And uh, these EX, these E exceptionals are, uh, are eye candy. Uh, let's go to the graded stuff. Uh, an A-Rod from 98 Bowman and a Jim Mint 10. Clean card. Uh, I wanted to say I bought it for around $10. All right, so I've been showing a lot of Jeter cards lately. I've got a few in this order, a few coming in from previous orders as well. Uh, but uh, no sooner did I shoot that last video than I read on Fox News that uh, they're going to be doing a documentary, like a six-part documentary on Derek Jeter, and I thought, great. Uh, there goes the uh, my plan to pick up a bunch of Jeters on the cheap. Not that they're really cheap. I think I paid around 18 bucks for that. This one I won for 99 cents. Bundled it with that last card too, so it didn't even pay much for shipping. As well as another Jeter I'll show here. This one I wanted to say I paid them around 13 bucks plus shipping for. A nice 2003 tops. No idea how hard these are to grade. But uh, just trying to pick up those Jeters when I can and the price point. And I've noticed they've jumped up a little bit. They may have not... Uh, it's, like they, it's not like they've doubled overnight, but uh, there's a lot more people showing interest in these Derek Jeter cards than there were uh, two weeks ago or a week ago. Here's the other one I bundled for 99 cents. Just an old-style GMA slab. It's from 96 Leaf Studio. It's got a little bit of a chip there. That's got to be a tough... Uh, it looks like it's chipping up there, but it's not. It's actually the, the, the Yankees logo on his hat. But uh, an early Jeter card from 96. For vintage, I still like to pick up some commons uh, when I see nice uh, graded co uh, commons at affordable prices. Slabbed, so I got this Rich Robertson for about six or seven bucks. Bundled it with these other uh, these vintage basketball cards. They're kind of sticking there, but a Jerry Chambers. Love that '71 design for Topps basketball. 71 is a great year for vintage, man. Basketball, football, and baseball—they're all. Uh, They'll have outstanding eye appeal. Here's a Jim Barnett and a six. It's a really nice looking six. I don't know what's the problem with that. Is that it looks better than that seven I just had? And then uh, here's some 73. Skeeter Swift. How can you go wrong? <laughs> Skeeter Swift. Love it. And then uh, Al Smith in the 8.5. Couple of nice high quality 73 tops common basketball players. And then one more common from the 75 set. Chuck Williams. Played for the Sounds. All right, let's look at some more uh, common stuff. Kevin Garnett uh, bought this on the cheap. I think centering on there is very poor, but uh, it's got good eye appeal, I guess. I've got these cards in the higher grade. Got several of them raw. I just picked it up on a whim. Bundled it with the next couple of cards. This 86 Metal Ray Allen. Everything's clean except this corner down here. It's almost as if when they sent it in to be graded, it got dinged up uh, while being graded. Because you probably wouldn't send that in with a little corner issue. Wouldn't be worth it to get graded if you knew it was going to come back uh, lower than a 7. And then uh, under $10 on this. I've always been a fan of the Ray Allen 96 tops. 
just a cool shot of him. Some people may not like that player in action shot, but I've always preferred to see a player, uh, the movement of the game, if you will, under 10 bucks. I paid a little bit more than you suspect for this. Uh, Z-Kling, it's an in insert in 96 Skybox Z-Force. And uh, there's only 11 of these graded, so they don't pop up. I haven't seen one graded pop up. Oh, probably in the last last uh, 10 months I've been collecting Ray Allen. Doesn't mean one hasn't, it just means I haven't seen it. So I forked over a few extra bucks for this, just for the rarity. Classic case, so yeah, I could have probably got a near mint to mint 8 raw and then submitted it at some point sometime, but will I ever pay less than $20 to get a card graded from PSA? No. So I'm content with that 8. Another card I bought, uh, probably about 26 bucks for this. Steve Nash with the coating, finest. I think a lot of the, we're seeing a lot of these cards come back. This is from the same lot, I think. And uh, a lot of these cards are coming on the market as PSA gets caught back up. So I think the prices are going to stay low on these for a little while. But once they dry up, once those returns come back and these cards got, start getting into people's collections, uh, the price will go back up because they'll become more scarce. Because in the end of the day, people will no longer be sending these cards into PSA to be graded because it's just too expensive to do that. It's not cost effective. So now is the time to buy when the market is being flooded because in the future, they will be harder to come by. Unless the whole market collapses, which, you know, that's, who knows, could happen. Uh, SP Authentic Tim Duncan Profiles uh, insert in his rookie year. Bought this for under $20. And once again, no matter if I were to buy this, very clean copy, no matter if I were to buy this raw, there's no way I could get this in a slab for under 20 bucks. And it's a clean card. You know, I think uh, some of these cards, PSA guys are ticked and they're, they're like given rougher grades. They definitely, I can definitely tell the difference between the grading of the newer ones that are just popping out uh, in this 506 run than uh, some of the old slabs that were a little bit more lenient maybe. Maybe just me, maybe my own bias. Here's a Kevin Garnett Mod Squad. Once again, uh, this card's got a little mangled corner, so this does justify a six. But uh, I've got this card raw, card raw, and I'm talking for six bucks, man. I I, I wanted I just wanted it for my PSA graded Kevin Garnett collection, so hence uh, picking it up in a six for just a few bucks. I bet you the person who had this graded sent it in. That corner was fine, and it got damaged in the grading process because I can't imagine why you would send that in to get a six on it. Um, here's a card I paid, uh, probably the most expensive card of the lot, uh, without a doubt, this Indomitian Sioux. He is uh, a Nebraska legend. I remember trying to score a couple of these when I started collecting again back in 2011, and they were, uh, they were a lot more then than they are now. And all Indomitian Sioux has had is had a Hall of Fame worthy career. Uh, he was a Pro Bowler every year at the beginning, and then he kind of tapered off. And he's he's been a consistent, solid player his last half of his career. Uh, will that carry him to Canton? Who knows? But uh, I'm a fan of his one way or the other. Of course, winning a Super Bowl doesn't hurt, but just great shine on that. Number to 400. In a mint nine grade, fair grade for this card. Uh, wrapping it up. Uh, that's all I got for you. Again, appreciate you guys' post your comments. I'll talk to you again soon.